Here is a 2024 Toyota Tundra 1794 edition in windshield pearl over saddle brown leather interior. They have increased everything in this vehicle when they did the refresh a couple years ago. They give you two different power options when you're in the 1794 and you have two different crew max. This is the 5.5 box and they also offer a 6.5 box. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. An over 17% increase in towing from the last gen and over 11% increase in payload. Is it going to be better than the rivals with some pros and cons? In the front, you're going to notice more chrome elements. That's because it's a 1794. The grill will get the chrome aesthetics. Auto leveling, LED headlights, and daytime runnings with sequential turn signals, which makes this stand out of class comparing to Ford or Chevy. I like the hidden lights that are inside the grill, Tundra badging, nearly 10 inches of clearance. And this year, you can option a TRD off road, which will change the suspension, in which it will be a little bit more for that off roadsy attire. Two engine options is going to be house. We have the base engine, which is the iForce twin turbo V6. That's going to produce 389 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque that has an electric generator. That's more or less a supercharger that gives better torque output for the twin turbo V6. Compared to the 10 speed automatic transmission, you will be achieving better MPGs though at 18 for the city and 23 for the highway. And because this is a 1790 you're getting these 20 inch machine finished alloy wheels. When you go to the Platinum, it's just going to be an alloy wheel and more chrome elements are going to be found on the side because of that 1794. And with this suspension, it's a double wishbone front and a multi-link rear, which dispenses with the leaf springs for coil springs and adds a lateral control arm, which will give a better ride for the comfort, straight line stability and increasing lateral rigidity. With that refresh, the drivetrain is 140% the size of the competitor trucks. Even though the max towing is at 12,000 pounds, it's still not going to be the best, best in class. And the same thing for the payload that's nearly 2,000 pounds, it's going to be a little bit less than Ford and Chevy. You get the standard acoustic front windscreen, which starts on the limited trim. So it's going to have a similarity to the Ford F-150 for the interior being a little little bit more quiet. And another reason to tick the box for a 1794, sequential LED turn lights, which just like the front, make it a little bit more sporty. Front and rear parking sensors and more chrome elements come into the rear bumper. Spare tire is going to be tucked underneath, soft to open. The 1794 can option a 5.5 or 6.5 crew max. The length is at 65.6 .6 between the wheel well housing at 48.7 inches. A height at 20.9 inches and the full width is at 58.7 inches LED interior lights with a home plug. We need to go inside and start this bad boy up so you can hear that exhaust now. way power seat adjustment for the driver, 12-way power seat adjustment for the passenger, leather bucket front seats in the cream and saddle. The platinum trim starts with the leather, heated and ventilated front seats with memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. Anytime you get into these trucks, they are large. So you're going to have a lot of space in the front, especially for the footwell and the width of it. The 1794 gets the American Walnut Wood. You get the badging right there. You get that saddle brown that's going to go with the contrast stitching and the contrast throughout. Satin aluminum around the air vents. And I just like how bold everything is. Heads up display that you can see everything that's in that digital gauge cluster with the digital rear view mirror, or you can just leave it this way and it's an edgeless rear view mirror. Pano moonroof goes all the way to the back. Large 14 inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. And when you put it into reverse, check this thing out. You got a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory for the front and the rear. A lot of different camera angles. So you can see all around the vehicle, including the bed. And you can also add 
those guidelines on or off. Dual climate control settings, push this here and this is the bird's eye view. When you click onto here, you can change the color of the 1794 if you don't want to see your exterior colors. Wireless charging pad, that American Walnut Wood comes into play. Driver mode select, which you have eco, normal, and sport. It's a digital gauge reader that can go through an array of information for the driver, including different settings. Leather wrap steering wheel, you get the perforated on the side, multi-function, Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus, going back, it's nice and soft, and you have a little storage pocket that opens up for a smaller cell phone. The key fob, and an area to put the key fob, you can slide that back, which when you do so, you have open access to USB ports. Open this up, and now you have full access to the storage box. This can change the configuration. You can put some change here also. The dash and the door panel integrating together. We have the upgraded JBL sound system. And I like that you get a two tier for your armrest and the two tone with the wood inlays yet again and a storage pocket with a large storage pocket down here with more than two beverage holders carved out. The back seat, we have storage that's gonna be underneath. The floor isn't completely flat, but you can also fold this down at a 60-40 split. Because of the JBL sound system, you do lose a little bit of storage in the back. Use the grab handle and the running boards to get inside. And headroom, not going to be an issue here. It's carved out behind the panel moonroof. Leg space is also good with storage behind both of the front seats. Heated and ventilated rear seats with cup holders in the center. USB and a home plug. The center gets the armrests with more cup holders. The door panel starts off with the manual sunshades, which is a big deal because this is the trim that it starts in. And you'll have the same two tiers for the armrest depending on your height, so it makes it easy. And two tiers of storage, just like the front. Sliding into the center, even though the floor isn't flat, you can still pick your feet up and you have plenty of space. So you're not going to be sharing feet or butt space in the Tundra. As for headroom, you're going to sit back a little bit and sit up. So being over six foot tall, you're going to graze the headliner. This is the base engine option. So 389 horses underneath here. Let's see how she goes. Does it feel like it has lag? That's the first question that I'm going to entertain. Not really. They do a good job with this twin turbo engine, even if you don't option the more power variant. I personally would tick the box for the more power variant. That's just me. And they give a nice soundtrack in the interior because we don't get a V8 anymore. It's only a twin turbo V6. It's going to take me to some pros and cons and starting off with the pros about the Tundra. When you're in the 1794, you don't really have to tick boxes for optioning features. It starts coming standard. When you get into the Platinum, you can still get the features more or less that's in the 1794. So if you don't want to fork out the extra dollars, you can get the same vehicle more or less without the chrome amenities in which you wouldn't have to do a chrome delete if you're not liking the chrome aesthetics on the exterior. Now that's going to change the wheel to aluminum and it's not going to be machine finished like this, but that's not necessarily a huge thing if you're looking to spend extra money to do a chrome delete on the exterior. It just sounds athletic. I like how it has that performance drive. Another pro about the vehicle is you feel like you have over 10 inches of clearance and that's not actually the case. You can now option the off-road TRD package on this so you can do your rock crawling and all those fun activities off-road, which this is a 4x2. I would take a 4x4 if you are looking to do anything off-road with it. Upgraded 14-inch screen. Not a huge fan of these big screens to be quite frank. 
12 inch I think would be enough because this extra two inches on the top, it does kind of stand out a little bit more so and it's not as flush. But I like the American walnut wood that they add in the interior because it gives a little bit of a class touch to the 1794, makes it a little bit more unique. Some cons about the vehicle is when you start optioning up to the 1794, now you're looking at a higher MSRP in which yes, they've increased over 11% in payload and increased over 17% in towing, but it's still not the best in class. You are getting Lexus components because of them sharing the same platform. It's just, it would be nice that when they did the refresh, it made it better than the Ford F-150 or the Chevy or GMC or the Ram, in which it's still under class in those categories. Acoustic side windows only in the capstone, that's a con to me because you can only option it if you're gonna spend over 70 grand. And at 70, I get an acoustic front windscreen so it makes it quiet, but it's not gonna be as quiet as an F-150. As for the width, it does feel wide in the lanes. The steering though is light, so you can maneuver in and out quickly, in which the same thing with that V6 twin turbo. It does a good job in the sense of what it needs to do. Dual piston brakes in the front, so it grabs well enough. An optioning a five foot, an optioning a 5.5 box or a 6.5 box. I like that we have some options and with the engines because if you don't want to fork out the extra dough, you don't have to. You can get more of the base trim. The Tundra is a long vehicle, so it's going to probably be around three lanes turn radius. And that's what we're getting. And let's rock and roll. Of course, everybody pulls out in front of you. But now you can see some of the dynamics in which it stays good on the road, in which it's still top heavy, don't get me wrong, but it has that athletic feel similar to, I would say, the Ford F-150 V8 Coyote because of the way that exhaust funnels in. But it's going to be more quiet, a little bit more of a soft ride when you get into the F-150. You're not going to feel as much. Here, with these upgraded wheels, you don't really feel the imperfections in the road, but I would say the big problem with the Tundra is they did all of these upgrades and giving us more features and more standard amenities, but it's still not the best in class. Pricing isn't bad for what you're getting, but when you're looking to get all round power in the sense of towing and payload, it just would be nice that they would have put it at a class higher than the rivals. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Tundra 1794 edition for our car review.